Tubman was born Araminta Ross on a plantation in Maryland as an enslaved person in the 19th century. Many enslavers at the time did not record when or where the enslaved people were born, and historians don't know the exact date or location of Harriet's birth. Evidence suggests she was born between 1819 and 1823. When she was a child, Harriet, her parents, and siblings first lived together in a small one-room cabin. Throughout her childhood, Harriet was beaten and whipped by her enslavers. She suffered a particularly serious injury when an overseer attacked a runaway enslaved person with a metal object, accidentally striking Harriet instead. This almost killed her, and it caused lifelong mental and physical health issues. Harriet worked several jobs on the plantation. She was first a house servant. Later, she was forced to perform hard manual labor. Her responsibilities included plowing the fields, lifting produce onto wagons, and hauling logs. Slavery was outlawed in the northern United States during the early to mid 19th century. As a result, many enslaved people escaped the South and traveled North to secure their freedom. A high number of them used the Underground Railroad. The term Underground Railroad was metaphorical. It did not refer to an actual railroad. Instead, it referred to a network of people who provided aid and shelter to escaped enslaved people on their journey North. Those in this network who provided aid to the escaped enslaved people were referred to as conductors. At night, the runaways would travel from station to station, hiding in the forest or sneaking onto trains before arriving in the northern states where they could remain free. In the early 1840s, Harriet's father was set free, and Harriet's enslaver's will promised freedom for her, her mother, and her siblings. Unfortunately, Harriet's new enslavers ignored the will and refused to allow Harriet and her family to go free. In the mid-1840s, Harriet met a free black man named John Tubman. Harriet's enslavers allowed her to marry and live with John, though she was still required to perform her responsibilities as an enslaved person. In addition, any children John and Harriet had would automatically be enslaved. Around this time, Harriet changed her name from Araminta to Harriet, possibly to honor her mother, who was also named Harriet. Fearing she would be sold following her enslaver's death, Harriet made the decision to escape her enslavers in 1849. Her brothers initially escaped with her, but for unknown reasons they decided to turn back, and Harriet returned with them. A few months later, Harriet escaped again, this time by herself. She was helped by the Underground Railroad. Following a difficult 90-mile-long journey, she finally made it to Pennsylvania and gained her freedom from enslavement. Tubman found employment as a housekeeper in Philadelphia, but she was dissatisfied living free by herself. She wanted her loved ones and friends to be free as well. Harriet decided to help enslaved people, including her family members, escape their enslavers. Not long after her own escape, Harriet joined the Underground Railroad as a conductor. She returned to the South and successfully helped her family members escape to the North. She intended to bring her husband John north as well, but he had remarried and made the decision to stay in the South with his new wife. In 1850, the United States passed the Fugitive Slave Act. The law allowed Southern enslavers to legally capture and return enslaved people who had escaped to the North. In order to remain free, escaped enslaved people would now have to travel to Canada. This made Harriet's position as an Underground Railroad conductor far more difficult as she now had to guide enslaved people further north to Canada. They traveled at night, typically in the spring or fall, which had shorter periods of daylight. She frequently drugged babies and adolescent children so slave catchers wouldn't hear their cries. 
Harriet eventually set up her own underground railroad network. It is often believed she assisted 300 enslaved people in their escape, though Tubman herself said the number was closer to 70. Regardless, she quickly became a well-known figure for her heroic work with the Underground Railroad. Harriet's courage and service did not end with the Underground Railroad. She served the Union during the American Civil War, which lasted from 1861 to 1865. During this time, she tended to injured soldiers, worked as a spy for the North, and even assisted a military operation that resulted in the rescue of more than 750 enslaved people. In 1863, Harriet was involved in a scout network on behalf of the Union Army. She went behind enemy lines where she gathered critical intelligence on the movement of the Confederate military. She also helped free enslaved people and create Black Union regiments. After the Civil War ended, Harriet settled in central New York with her family. She was active in humanitarian work. She became a civil rights activist, fighting against social injustice. She was able to remain active in philanthropy by growing and selling vegetables, raising pigs, and through donations. Though she was illiterate, she went on speaking tours in support of the women's suffrage movement. She also worked with the famed activist and suffrage leader, Susan B. Anthony. Harriet Tubman died from pneumonia in New York in 1913. Before she passed, she reportedly said to her friends and family surrounding her, I go to prepare a place for you. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching the History Stop, and we'll see you next time.